Hello, everybody. I'm here with Bill Hurd. He's an ex-Commodore engineer and a lifelong electrical uh, hobbyist and uh, engineer. Um, yep. He's going to talk to us today about phase lock loops. And uh, is it going to be everything about phase lock loops? No, or? no, not at all. It's just uh, some of the cool things we can do. We're so used to talking about digital, but here's a semi-analog part that can jump in and help us sometimes. Excellent. Oh. You know, today... Yep. Um, PLLs are in all my microcontrollers and my FPGAs and I just write a little bit of code and I just give it sometimes I just drop in a frequency I want it to generate so you know yep. I have 16 megahertz in I want a gigahertz out I just type that in and the phase delay <laughs> yeah and so why do we care why do we care about how a PLL works yep the um, the, the, the phase lock loop as, as I was saying earlier, there's, there's digital and there's analog. And, uh, you know, we're going to go down the path that it's all analog. And I, I used to say it's all analog anyways, you know, because of the ringing and the time it takes there. And one day, Headley Davis looks at me and says, what about quantum? I'm like, all right, you get far enough and it turns digital again. But, it, but it's all analog. And a phase lock loop, it actually saved my life one time. It threw itself in front of the bus. And I've been eternally grateful to phase lock loops. They're that useful. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, a phase lock loop really did save the day for a 1985 CES show for the Commodore 128. We had a rogue 80 column chip that was asynchronous. It was, had its own clock. It had its own version of what should happen when. And what happens is he's clocking along, and if you don't know what's happening and that clock transitions, you're clocking an unknown state. And the designer said, well, since it'll happen anyways, no need to correct for it. Well, it's all statistics. So if you synchronize and then have an earth stage to synchronize, by the time you put three or four of these together, it actually will give you at least not garbage. It, it might take a one clock longer, but it won't give you garbage. So we fixed that by taking two uh, video controllers and phase, phase lock looping them together. So if they're both trying to do the same thing at the same time. So that's kind of what it's useful for. Let me uh, put up a, a block diagram of phase lock loop here. And uh, again, this is, this is modeled uh, after the CD4046. Matter of fact, we, I could put up some links and stuff here a little later on. Can you still buy um, a 4046? I did. I just did from both uh, probably uh, DigiKey and Jameco. Um, the, it's, it, it's harder to find the uh, data sheet these days because they keep taking you to those alldatasheets.com places. Uh, I'm getting a little echo here if you hear me hesitate. Hold on. So, uh, so it's, you can definitely buy them uh, and get the data sheets. There is also the NE564 if you want to go faster. But the CD4046 is a CMOS only and then they have an HC4046 and then they put out TTL variants on it. But th this part here that's on my bench is a CMOS, and I have already accidentally given it 12 volts while it was on a 5 volt supply. So they're pretty hardy characters, the, the CMOS ones. They don't go as fast. Um, you actually could probably run them at 200 degrees if you run them really slow. The old CMOS stuff, you can derate the hell out of them and they'll still work. So it's just speed equals time. Hey, Bill, let's so, uh, pause here for a second. There's a lot of audio distortion. From me? Yeah. All right. Oh, wait. It's Let's start talking again. All right. So I was going to say, how is it right now? Uh, it's great right now. Okay. So, is, whoa, is it when I get excited? <laughs> I guess so. Okay. I'll try to not get excited. No, no. Okay. It sounds good now. It was just really quantized there for a second. You know, if it's quantized, it's probably, uh, at least I'm on the one that's not wireless. The laptop is probably all this network stuff we take for granted these days. So... But the, the 4046 has in it two phase comparators, and we'll talk about the difference in a second, and we can select which one of it is. And out of this phase comparator is a signal, and we'll talk about that. But then we just put it into a low-pass filter, and we make a DC voltage. So quite simply, the voltage does one thing when frequencies are doing what we want, and it does something else when it's just random. We take that voltage, and we put it into a voltage-controlled oscillator. And so it's analog. There's a voltage and there's an oscillator. But boom, we're back to digital again uh, right after that. And I'll tell you that that oscillator knows the future. That's what's cool about a phase lock loop. 
any other circuit, I have to wait for the clock edge to know there's a clock edge. Oh, there just went the clock edge. But with a phase lock loop, it goes, you know what? One, mic one microsecond ago, there was a clock edge. Before that, there was a clock edge. There's another one coming, and it knows when. And that's because of the energy stored in this cap. If you make this an electrolytic clap, this, voltage, this oscillator will move around real slow. And you can, people will do things, you ever see like a resistor here, or even a, you'll see a Bessel filter here or something, then they get real complex. That's where they critically dampen it. And by the way, if you ever get a resistor in series with the cap, that's not a simple circuit. You actually, uh, it actually goes beyond my math. It takes the zero off of zero, moves the pole in the other quadrant, and becomes a weird thing real fast. But a simple RC circuit will store that energy uh, of what voltage it was, and so if, we, uh, if things change too quick, it'll fill in the gaps. And so I've actually seen a phase lock loop written, shown like this in the old days. They show a spring hooked to a mass. And hmm. what that was, uh, I think that's, did that symbol come in? Yeah, so you can't see it real well. But that was the symbol for inertia. So a phase lock loop has inertia. It, 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 it knows what it was just doing, and so it'd like to keep doing that. So what we do. Is that uh, filter, does it have a specific name? Simple RC filters work good in the, in the ones I use. If you get into radio frequencies, they will do things. They, they, they make discriminators out of these. And, uh, you know, if you ever tuned an FM radio, and we'll talk about how this would do an FM, so we'll talk about a little bit of analog. Um, they tightly control how wide the, the signal is allowed to go to capture the VCO and whatnot. So, but for what we're doing, just a simple RC. Uh, otherwise, this is just a bunch of pulses. So this is detected. Coming out of the, pulse, of the phase comparators are the errors that it sees between the two signals. So you need something to make it into a voltage. Otherwise, it's on or off, and, and that's no good. So there's two kinds of phase comparators called one and two in the 4046. And one is really an exclusive OR gate, just as it's shown there. And it's pretty useless for the kind of stuff I've done. Um, an exclusive OR gate, if you think about it, if I've got a reference signal coming in, the only thing that will make that gate be quiet is an exact replica. If this is too big, there's an error term here and an error term here. And pretty soon, this, this is bouncing all over the place. So it's good for comparing square, square waves to each other that are identical. We don't do that very often. If I, if I had, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't need a phase lock loop if I had two identical square waves, I'd argue. What the other one does, though, is it looks for the edges. It tries really hard to make these edges coincide. So it will adjust. If this thing is over here, if this frequency, uh, this pulse, it'll bring the VCO until it locks, until it lines up with that. And it does that because it samples the output compared to what you're doing. So it's always looking at what it's putting out versus what you're putting into it. And it's doing whatever it can to make these two edges line up. And that's a godsend, because I know this edge. If I know this edge, I know that edge. And that's why I wanted to do, show some examples of when that might come in handy here. But first, I thought uh, I'll just show you a, a quick uh, phase lock loop in operation here. Now, some phase lock loops, they will, the, the oscillator will run in the middle, uh, the middle of its frequency band when there's nothing to lock onto. Others will lay on the low side or whatnot. Um, but quite simply, I've got a clock going into it, and you see the clock coming out of it, and they're tracking each other. And I'm going to break lock here. There. So, so is the top line the signal going into your phase lock loop? And the the bottom? top line is the phase lock loop free running. OK. And the bottom is now, see, and, and see how you can't see anything meaningful in there? That's actually the problem we're going to try and fix, because I'll tell you, there's nothing meaningful in there. If you make a clock transition travel right here, and you don't have your setup time, and you don't have your hold time, that part could go metastable on you, which means that the unknown state will race around the flip-flop until all the gates inside the flip-flop are in an unknown state. And in the old ECL days, that would actually propagate real fast through all of them and blow the fuse because now everybody's mm -hmm. linear and between you know, their, their VCC and VEE. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk it down, and it probably won't work, but we'll try it anyways, and get another capture.
and you see it trying to do things, it'll, it'll try and land on certain edges and stuff. So you're bringing your reference clock more into the, the spec of what your PLL is. Yeah, in, in theory. <clears throat> so what we saw was a phase lock loop that was previously locked that is now no longer locked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I may just leave it like that rather than sit here and dink around with it. Let's see if I can get it. And what, what you can do with this Well, anyways, you saw it earlier. It was, it was, uh, they were tracking each other. So what'll happen, and, and this is actually how you tune in an FM radio or something. What'll happen is there's a capture range. It will only reach so far to either side, but once it grabs it, it'll follow it, and and sometimes try and try and bring it in. So if we look back at a phase lock loop, let me show an example here. If um, if I have a frequency coming into this, and it's frequency modulated, it's getting shorter and longer, shorter and longer, the voltage here is going to be going up and down, up and down as the, this tracks it. Well, if you put a speaker on there, guess what? You just, you just tuned into an FM radio, a frequency modulated radio. So the frequencies that we're wiggling here appear as a voltage here. So that's just one of the uh, cool things that a phase lock loop will do for you in the, in the uh, in the digital world. I think I've analog. actually seen application notes where they show you how to make simple FM uh, receivers from, yep. from phase lock loops. Right. And I used to do something um, back when I did ultrasonics where I would have a frequency, but I would do what's called chirping. I would make the frequency go real fast for a second, then go back to its normal. And this thing here, it'd get upset and it would spike. And I would hook, hook a, 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 a comparator to it and I could find the beginning of a pulse from that amongst a whole bunch of garbage by introducing an error. It's kind of like introducing a, uh, um, a, a, a layer two error or layer one error on token ring or something like that where you blow a clock and, and, and it freaks out and says, oh, that must be the start of the packet. So you can do the same thing there. So the other thing we can do is clock recovery. Again, if, if I'm sitting here and this capacitor is saying, you know, I'm at one meg, megahertz, I'm at one megahertz, and some clocks drop out, He'll start to drift, so the rate it drifts is based on this circuit right here. Um, the rate it captures is also based on that. So it's a trade-off. How fast can I go grab a frequency versus how, how hard will I sit on that frequency when I have it? Uh, th I've done this with electrolytics, and it takes a minute for this thing to move around. Um, or we've done it with uh, very active circuits here, and it you know, turns into an FM radio or, or something. Um, so that fact that it... Uh, will hold that frequency. That's that inertia we're talking about. Um, well, here's an example of why that might be useful. Let's say that I want to modulate a carrier, uh, you know, which means I want to put information on it and I want to broadcast it. Well, I can save a lot of information and I can, a lot of broadcast power, and I can save room on the broadcast band if I suppress the carrier before I send it which means now it's just the information, but not the carrier it rides on. Well, wait a minute. When this lands back in, I'm talking about a TV set, actually, the color subcarrier, it's like, that's great. You got me the color changes, but I need something to compare it to. So once every horizontal line, they would give it eight color clocks. And this thing would go, ah, that's good. You give me eight clocks, and I'll hold it one whole horizontal line across the screen. And so this becomes our restoring carrier. So what this can do is clock recovery. That's, that's kind of where I was headed with that. It can do, um, uh, if, if you give it a few clocks, it can keep going from it. If you give it a whole bunch of averages, a whole bunch of frequencies, like in a, in a Manchester encoding or something like that, it'll find the carrier and, and stand to this. So it, it, it's, if it's noisy, if the clock is actually stuttering and, and missing out and stuff or got extra edges, it'll clean all that up. 